pause the video now guys and try this year nine straight line graphs white throws maths worksheet v okay aimed at key stage three maths but this is appropriate and also ideal for year 10 and year 11 so gcc foundation and higher tier so it's for the crossover topics okay for this topic okay so start with question number one okay two straight lines l1 and l2 are shown in the grid write down the coordinates where the point l1 and l2 meet well l1 and l2 should meet here so that'll be along the corridor and then down the stairs or down the basement so it's two minus four okay so we obviously write coordinates here with our curly brackets okay what about the next part write down the equations of the lines okay if it's a vertical line it's x equals a number so x equals a we'll call it okay so x equals a sorry guys my this is going off the screen here i apologize and then y equals b so horizontal will be y equals a number so l1 is the line x equals 2 and again if you're unsure okay write down some coordinates and then see what is common in both for the horizontal one l2 okay that's y equals minus 4 and again if you're unsure Please obviously check here by writing down some coordinates on L2, okay, and see what is common in both, okay. So vertical lines are x equals a number, and horizontal lines are y equals a number. Question number two: Complete the table of values for y equals two x plus three. Okay, so we're going to sub in these values. So when x is zero, two times zero is going to be zero plus three is going to be three. When x is one. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is going to be 5. It's going to be a good get up in 2s. That's going to be 7. That's going to be 1. It's going to be minus 1. Okay, check it if you need to, guys. Okay. On the grid, draw the graph of y equals 2x plus 3 for values between minus 2 and 2. So minus 2, minus 1. Put a little cross there. Minus 1, 1. 0, 3. 1, 5 and two seven okay with a ruler and a pencil draw your straight line there we go okay so question number three guys write down the gradient of each line segment now to work out the gradient guys it's a rise over run or the change in y over the change in x so how much you go up divided by how much you go across okay or go down okay so we go we go across three and up one so the gradient will be one third okay one divided by three okay and we leave our answer as a fraction okay for this okay we go across minus two okay because we're going to left two then we go up four so it's four divided by minus two which would be negative two or minus two. Okay, question number four. Which of these graphs will go through the point for zero? Circle your answer. So when x is four, y is zero. When x is four, y is actually gonna be four times four, which is 16, so it can't be that one. Because four times four makes 16 and not zero. When x is four, y is eight. When x is four, Okay, so yeah, so that that's going to be one answer. Okay, when x is four, y is going to be zero. So that's that also works. What about this one, four divided by four is going to be one, not zero. So it can't be that one there. Okay. Question number five: Write down the gradient and the coordinates of the y-intercept of the line y equals eight plus three x. So let's write it in the form y equals mx plus c. So let's write it as y equals three x plus eight. So the gradient is the coefficient of x, the number in front of the x, the number next to x, is going to equal to three. 
and the y-intercept is positive 8. Okay. So y equals mx plus c, m is your gradient, and c is your y-intercept. So where it crosses on the y-axis. Question number six, work out, yeah, work out the equation of yeah, the line. So work out the gradient shift. So gradient first, we go across two, and then up one. So it's going to be y equals a half x, and it crosses at minus two. So the answer is y is equal to a half x or one over two x or x over two minus two k okay. so remember the gradient is the change in y over the change in x so rise over run and to work out your y intercept well it's where the graph crosses okay the y axis which is going to be there okay that minus two okay there we go. Question number seven, guys. Looking at a word, yeah, a, a word actually up there, okay. So questions seven and eight are actually GCSC math style questions, okay. They always put like worded questions, okay. So question seven, the capacity of a of a lorry's petrol tank is 250 liters. The graph shows the amount of petrol remaining. Why? Against the amount of petrol used. Okay. How much petrol is remaining when 160 litres have been used? Okay, obviously, obviously, zoom in here, obviously, I haven't got the exact, okay. Yeah, it'll be around here. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to estimate, okay, 90, okay, or even 85. Okay. I've done an equation of this line, so I'm going to work out the gradient, okay? So, we're going to have, obviously, so we're going to have price remaining here, so I have to write as, write, write as PR is equal to minus MX plus 250, and then our job is to work out the gradient. Now, obviously, a recording at the time actually, it's actually quite hard, actually, to actually see it, it's all good, actually, so... I'm, I'm going to have to like estimate here, okay, because I can't see the exact squares here on here, okay. We go across 50, we go up 50, so it'll be minus 1 as a gradient, so it will be y is equal to minus x plus 250, and therefore, guys. That is going to be my final answer, okay? Okay, question eight has got a capital H there. So this is designed for higher tier students or students here that are trying to obviously push on, okay, to do higher tier maths. The table shows how long it takes to fill a swimming pool using different numbers of pumps, okay? So this is what I call your like inverse proportion. So when we double it, okay, we actually half it. Okay, so when I times it by three, I divide it by three, so that'd be ten there. When I times that by five, divide that by five, so that'd be six there. And then when it's four, one times four is four. Thirteen divided by four, if you're not sure, you can work it out. You get 7.5, okay, half it and then half it again. You get 15 halves, which is equal to 7.5. Okay, so this is what I call your like inverse proportion. So the more pumps we have, okay, to fill a swimming pool, the less time it takes in hours for the pool to be filled up okay so that's the key so describe the relationship between the number of pumps used and the time taken the more pumps that are used the less time it takes for the swimming pool to be filled to the top okay and the less number of pumps we have the longer time it takes okay so this is what we call inverse proportion okay so this is yeah this is a topic that you'll cover 
more in year 10 and year 11, but the topic here yeah, is called inverse proportion, okay? So whenever I multiply here, I divide by that same number actually, yeah. so one times three is three, okay, 30 divided by three is 10, because I've got more pumps here, so it therefore will take less time, okay? And that is my logic, okay? so I'm doing one times something equals that number, and then I do 30 divided by that number, okay, because the more pumps I have, the less time it takes to fill the swimming pool, okay? Right, guys, that's the end of today's video. Okay, I hope that made sense. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Follow me on TikTok. I'll see you soon, okay? Bye for now. Take care. All the best.